Hello, I'm Dr. Beverly Vaughn, and welcome to Menopause and You Chat with a Physician. Today, we have the privilege of having Dr. Stephanie Flagg with us. She's a rheumatologist at Bryn Mawr Hospital. The topic that we're going to discuss is calcium and its role in bone health and the controversies that are surrounding calcium supplementation. Welcome, Dr. Flagg, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'd first like you to tell our audience what the role of calcium is in bone health. Well, bones are living, growing tissue. They are constantly being remodeled. So there are cells that lay down new bone and other cells that take away old bone. And this is a way to repair micro damage that occurs on a daily basis. Um, in early childhood and early adulthood, the rate of bone formation exceeds the rate of bone reabsorption, and bones become stronger and denser and heavier. After this age, the rate of reabsorption becomes more pronounced, and there is a gradual decline in bone mineral density. Estrogen helps prevent bone loss in women who have gone through menopause, there is a more rapid decline in bone mineral density. Calcium helps to slow this bone loss and can help to keep bone strong. How do our bodies absorb calcium? Calcium is absorbed through the small intestine. Vitamin D is essential to enhance calcium absorption. My patients often wonder what the exact dose of calcium is that's right for them. And I know it changes um, depending on how old you are, whether you're menopausal or not menopausal. Can you explain that for us? Well, for men and for premenopausal women, we recommend a total of 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day. In postmenopausal women, we recommend a higher dose of about 1,200 milligrams a day. And uh, this is the combined amount from dietary and supplements of calcium. You had mentioned vitamin D. Could you also tell us what the recommended dose for vitamin D is? The recommendations for vitamin D are changing. Uh, I usually recommend starting with 1,000 international units of vitamin D a day. And I will check the vitamin D level because we each have a different amount that is needed um, based on genetics and how well we absorb um, uh, vitamin D and uh, based on pigmentary differences in our skin. Is it better to get calcium in foods or in a supplement or do you recommend a combination? I uh, re will recommend to my patients that they get as much calcium as they can through dietary sources. Uh, those who have osteoporosis or who, at who are at risk for osteoporosis should supplement uh, with um, calcium supplements to reach adequate doses. We all know that dairy products are rich in calcium, but can you share with us what other foods have a high calcium content? Other sources of calcium include dark green vegetables like spinach and kale and broccoli. Almonds are also a good source of calcium. And then there are fortified foods like cereals and some orange juices where we've added calcium and they are another source of calcium. What are the risks and or side effects of taking calcium? Calcium tends to be well tolerated, especially when it's taken in small divided doses over time. Um, Constipation and stomach upset can be seen in some patients. When patients take a high amount of calcium supplements, there may be some increased risk for kidney stones. Um, the risk of calcium supplements in cardiovascular health is controversial. We really need more information, better studies, studies that at the onset are designed to look at cardiovascular risk and whether there is any association with the intake of calcium. So it sounds like your final recommendation, particularly for women who are at risk for osteoporosis or who have osteoporosis, is to take calcium. Absolutely. 
Dr. Flagg, thank you so much for being with us today. I think you brought a lot of clarity to a topic that can be very confusing for our patients. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here.